proud to announce that uh, Tony Werner, the CTO of Comcast, uh, has decided to, be, to participate in our event. And he's backstage, and I'd like to welcome him. But before I do so, I just want to say I heard through the grapevine, and I can't tell you who I talked to, but this person knows who that is, uh, and said, uh, this is sort of post the canoe situation and, the, and pre the cable uh, show, and said, Tony is really interested in interactivity. He's passionate about it. And I said, great. And I went home and gave him a call. Tony, we're happy to have you here. We're going to try here. We're trying things in a, in, a, in a new way. I'll sit over here, actually. And she's over here. Can everybody see fairly? OK. Well, uh, a lot has happened in the last, what, month? And I feel that uh, Comcast, in particular, has taken the cable industry like a car, uh, zero to 60 in about four seconds. We were, we were uh, you know, still in the, uh, not the analog world, but we certainly were we weren't sure where the cable industry was going. We were wondering. And then all of a sudden, you came out with all those incredible announcements. And, all of, and, and, uh, and the world is a different place. So we're very, I think the community can say, by the way, that we're very excited about what's going on and the initiative that Comcast is taking. Well, thank you. I, uh, <clears throat> first of all, I'm, uh, I'm very excited to be here. And I appreciate uh, you picking up the phone and calling me and asking me to show up. Um, I think that uh, this NCTA was a good time for us to bring out uh, a fair amount of new products. Uh, but like everything, this is really, uh, we started probably really in earnest about three years ago, recognizing that uh, the world's moving a lot faster and that the competition is moving faster, the desires of the consumers to interact, to do different things, was coming on a lot faster than we ever saw. So we started putting in a lot of investments, and it takes two years, two and a half years, probably on some of these network investments and platform investments before you can start iterating products. This year, we're starting to show the products come out. I'm hopeful and I'm optimistic that in the next 12 months, uh, we'll even uh, wow people a lot more than what we have uh, at this NCTA. Well, that's very exciting. <clears throat> So I, I want to go into some of those products in more depth that you yeah. launched Great. at, uh, at uh, the cable show. But before I do, uh, just a general question. Is the movement to embrace multi-screen and connected devices, uh, is this a positive change for the cable industry? Is this a, uh, a risky change? Is it necessary? How do, how do you feel about that? I think you probably feel it's pretty necessary, but what do you think? Well, I think it's hugely positive, and, uh, <clears throat> and it's really interesting. We. Um, I'll say three, four, five years ago, had had all of these uh, second screen ideas that uh, because, and there's a lot of reasons for us, we had a lot of set tops in the system that could decode video, they didn't have a great UI. We said, gosh, if we could build a Wi-Fi remote, then you could do all the searching and everything on it, change the channel. We knew that thanks to eBIF and some of the work that we had done at Canoe and prior to that, that we could actually control the set mm -hmm. and you could get, a, get around it. The problem is, is the devices that you'd build three years ago were kind of clunky. They cost as much as a set-top box. And we went back and forth. <clears throat> well, then uh, Apple came out with the iPad. And it was uh, very shortly after the iPad was out, maybe as little as 45 days, one of our engineers in Denver said, hey, he was doing a bunch of stuff, and he created this user interface on the iPad and said, I can control the TV. You know, and since you've set up these systems in the back end like remote record, I can even set recordings from this uh, when I'm in the home or out of the home. And so as soon as I seen it, I said, you know, somebody's building the wireless device for us. Consumers are going to buy it, it appears, and, it, you know, it certainly has appeared that way. And so um, I was actually on vacation or heading to vacation. I called Brian Roberts and at the time Steve Burke, and I said, you've got to see this. This is absolutely you know, this is, you know, an amazing tool. 
And I said, you know, I'll be back from vacation in a week, Brian. I'd like to show it to you. And he says, screw you. Get this guy in here. I want to see it, you know, before you get back. So I sent the guy, uh, uh, the engineer from our Denver office, into there. They set up the demonstration. Brian seen it, um, fell in love with it. We all did. He announced it at, at the cable show of that year. And within three months of the cable show, it was uh, mid-November, four months of the cable show, we actually delivered the product in the app store that would work across about 25 million set-top boxes, allow you to, to do it. Um, a lot of that is because we had this back end that we start to build with remote uh, recordings and other pieces. Mm -hmm. But that has been, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's a start. And, uh, and several other people are doing the same, same exact thing. <clears throat> but I think it's absolutely critical. And, and just today, of that app, which we put out, and you have to remember that, <clears throat> you know, of how many people own a tablet, live in a Comcast area, we have uh, five and a half million downloads of that app uh, to the iOS platform. Amazing. And any week, we have a million people use that app, okay? So we have a million recurring users in any given week, or just short of a million uh, in there. It fluctuates a little bit over time. Um, with it, so it's got some relevancy. Some people use it just to find something because it's a quick and easy way. Um, a lot of people use it to set recordings. Um, you know, since that time, uh, just on remote recordings as an example, we opened up remote recordings, allowing you to do it on this app or an iPhone or the website at that point. Today, a third of our recordings are not set on the set-top box. They're either set via the website or more likely via the app. So. It's too bad that remote, though, doesn't work uh, uh, for, you know, for people who aren't cable subscribers necessarily, so you grow that audience closer to the Comcast brand. Is that in the future? Well, there's, uh, there, there's a possibility of that, yes. Yep. Okay, that's interesting. Yep. Okay, well, let's... Uh, <laughs> well, that, that probably will bring up the whole topic of personalization. Sure. Uh, I know that, um, that the cable operators are very interested in that. Uh, we talked actually a lot about that at our New York show. The idea of porting, the idea of porting uh, the, the, uh, the identity, the, your profile, yep. from network to network or from <coughs> house to house. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that and probably how does that fit in with your cloud-based server, the X1 platform? Great. Well, there's a couple pieces. I, I'll talk just a moment, <coughs> and then maybe we'll uh, show a quick clip uh, if you like. Um, you know, personalization is, uh, is really interesting. We think it's very powerful. And uh, persistent personalization, so when you go from platform to platform, um, is key. So part of the advantage of moving everything that we have, all this business logic and functionality into the cloud, is uh, used to be if you'd go do a search on the web and you search for a particular actor, you search for this here, you'd get one list of results. Then you'd go to your set-top box, you'd do a search, you'd get entirely different results. And then the third part of it is, is it never remembered that you actually done the search. So uh, as you go to it. Today, as we've moved those, uh, that search engine into the cloud, if you're on the website and you do a search, if you're on the tablet and you do a search, if you're on the TV and you do a search, it uh, is going to give you the same results. It's going mm -hmm. to the same piece. And it's also persistent. So if you pull up last nine and say, what are the last nine things I watched, you can go to the website and it'll pull up the last nine channels that you watched. Uh, where you stopped abroad, you know, at what point. Mm -hmm. If you go to the app, you can pull up the last nine. If you go to the TV, you can pull up the same last nine. And this is something that uh, I think is powerful uh, because consumers want that. And, uh, and again, going back to this app, it's one of the first times that we really had people that would sign in with their credentials to do something. Before that, you didn't know, as all you knew is it was a household. Mm -hmm. Now, thanks to the personal device, you start to have credentials that are associated with the person, associated with the personality and the persona of what they want to do. Well, I'm sure many people here can talk to you about the, uh, the, the work that they did to you know, lock down that set-top box, track people's click-throughs, yep. know exactly who's in the house. But <clears throat> yes, it never was really pushed to a personal device. So. All, all of it's yeah. part of it. Let's... Um, do you want to show a clip? OK. Yeah, so this here would be the, uh, I think it was the one that we had labeled number two, uh, which is the X1. <laughs> See how you got it labeled. So Where's that, my uh, tape? Okay, hold on. Otherwise, this is it. That's it. Okay, thanks. Okay. So, this is showing the uh, another app that we released with it, which is on the iOS, to where actually controlling through gestures on an iOS device. This one happens to be the uh, iPhone 4. You can actually do uh, various controlling. If you pinch it, 
you can go ahead back to full screen. If you turn it sideways, you automatically go into search and you start typing, and again, this is the same search engine that uh, pulls pieces up. You tap down and you go down. Center is okay. One finger, uh, I think we'll show it, as you start to swipe, if you swipe one finger down, it's one thing. If you swipe two fingers down, it's another. Uh, very, very easy. Shake it to pause. Um, shake it to resume. Uh, in it. And again, this is an app that I think uh, Charlie Heron and myself and a couple of others thought about uh, 60 days before we were going to launch in Boston. And we said we should really do this app. We've got the capability in the X1 platform to do a lot more. Let's uh, put our developers, the iOS and the product team, together. And in about, I, I think it was 60 days, That's we're, incredible. we're able to pull that off and, and put it out there. We're not sure that this is how people want to navigate. But again, it's one. We've got a lot of other things that we're working on as well to... Like? <laughs> well, we've got a remote control with the channel up down. No, it's uh, TV of yesterday. No, we've got, uh, we've got uh, a, a number of things. And we're not, we're, not exactly, uh, we're not exactly sure which one will carry the day and how we're going to move them together. One thing that I think we are starting to think is today our app on the tablet and on the iPhone has gotten to be fairly large. You can consume a lot of content. We've got close to 10,000 assets that you can consume right on it, either in the home or out of the home. And you can control your TV. I think we're moving to a direction to where we're going to have one app, which is really a control app for controlling the TV in your home. And the other app is much more a consumption app. Because we're finding when people sit down with the tablet and they pull it up, they've got a pretty good idea that, hey, I want to watch content on this or I want to control the big TV. So we're going to separate those. When we do that, I think you'll see, uh, in fact, I know you'll see us put a whole bunch of different ideas into how you control and interact with your TV uh, that we're experimenting with right now. Well, I know in, in on X1, uh, I guess you have the, some gesture technology. Yeah. There's some voice technology. Yep. And you have the ability to throw images and all kinds of other things. I mean, yes. you really, you really, launched the whole uh, shmigegi, I mean, what's the right <laughs> word, you know, you kind of went, like I said, from zero to 60 in well, two seconds, perhaps. It's a, it's a platform, and I mm -hmm. think, you know, so even with the UI we've got today on it, the UI is hands and feet above what we had before. Um, none of us think it's the perfect UI, but the nice thing is, is the platform allows us to iterate fairly quickly, and I think you'll see us iterate as we get real-time feedback from the customers, uh, from gestures, from what's happening, to try and make it, uh, you know. What's interesting better. also is that I, I believe the the hybrid DVR box that works with it incorporates True Two Way. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. We yeah. don't have to go into that in too much depth right now, right. But, but it's interesting that it does. What um, I, I already seen our 10 minute sign. Come oh yes, up. I, I have so, more. We have more things to talk so, about. So. Social. Okay. Well, uh, what I. Okay, let's talk about. Skype. Great. All right. Uh, making that relationship with Skype. Was, um, so, uh, you know, I'm delighted. Uh, first of all, I'm delighted to have the relationship with Skype. And I'll say that uh, even though they got a little distracted during their purchase by Microsoft, uh, the company hasn't changed, uh, hasn't really changed. All right, now we're up to 15 minutes, so <laughs> we're going the other way. I'm feeling so much better. Uh, <laughs> this never happens. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> Just in case it goes the other way, we'll get it in. The uh, no Skype has been a great partner, and they've uh, and uh, they've been uh, fun to work with. This project turned out to be a lot harder than what we initially thought. There was uh, some other companies coming to the market with kind of a proprietary closed system to do video conferencing between people, and the two or three problems that it had in my mind, or what I thought was a problem. One was, is it was proprietary, so you had to talk to somebody else, say, how would you like to buy this piece of equipment, or have your cable company put it in. It was very expensive, the install was hard and slow, and then you had a very small universe to talk to. <clears throat> Skype, at the time that we did it, um, was, I th think, six, uh, 600 million endpoints, you know, now 800 million endpoints that are actually on Skype. And I said, you know, Skype is the way that people communicate with video today. Why not see if we can't do a deal? So they were delighted to do it with us. We've worked very hard to make the um, experience be seamless with television so that you can be watching TV 
and all of a sudden if somebody Skypes you, it'll come up like a caller line ID, and you've got a button you can push. You can say audio only, in case you're in your pajamas or whatever, or you can say video and uh, accept the call, but it's very, very simple, so you don't have to uh, do, which is today, most people actually place a phone call to somebody before they do their Skype. Say, hey, how would you like to Skype? Okay, hang up, I'll get on Skype, and away mm -hmm. you go. Here it's live, it's easy, your address book integrates with it, um, and you can obviously Skype to these other devices that we were putting in, which are all high definition cameras, good experience uh, that we were running, or you can uh, Skype with uh, a friend or a family member who happens to be out if your significant other's at a uh, furniture store and say, gosh, I think I wanna buy this couch. They can call in, Skype, you pull it up on the TV, with it. And this here we will also have to where you'll be able to move it from the TV back to your phone, back to the TV. And you, this is not an exclusive arrangement with Skype? Uh, meaning, well, I don't know, uh, this is the only deal that we are putting our uh, wood behind right now because we put so much effort into it. And, uh, and as I said, you know, while it sounds simple, like just put Skype on the TV and some of the smart TVs already do it and some of the others. We put a number of things uh, and pieces of technology into this that do make it different. And one of them is, is making it uh, compatible with all the TVs out there. The one thing we didn't know until we got until the last uh, 120 days of the project was that uh, the latency of a lot of HDMI uh, in the HDCP eats up all the latency budget that you got for a Skype call. So all of a sudden you had all this mapped out, it worked fine on eight out of 10 TVs and you found that two out of 10 through this interchange had so much latency that you couldn't have a good Skype call so we had to go back and re-engineer pieces uh, with it. So I, I'm happy that we're in the market. Uh, we are actually, I think, across just about the entire US of, of us now. We're a little bit inventory constrained so we haven't started marketing heavily. You're going to see us probably in the next 60 to 90 days start to market pretty well and the first clip that we got here is one of the first uh, uh, renditions of kind of what the Skype commercial looked like. So, well, we let's see that. And this is in Boston, Seattle, Atlanta, August, Augusta, Chicago, Detroit, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Indianapolis, Miami, and Pittsburgh. Yeah, and so that it, launched m many we, more we markets. Went, yeah, we went uh, very fast, and it'll be, you know, it'll be across the entire all of our footprint here shortly if it isn't uh, if it isn't as we speak. Ernie, can you roll number one, please? Volume, need volume. Volume. Stop. Simon. <laughs> need volume. <laughs> okay, roll again. With volume. <laughs> it's just no fun and I can't do it, it's a. Uh... Number one. Okay. There's no volume for some reason, okay. Sorry about that. That's it? Okay, well, sorry about that. It was working last night. Oh, so, uh, it, all right, well, let's, uh, if, if we're not, so we're not gonna get volume on it. No. See, this new technology is tough, isn't it? <laughs> I, uh, and you make fun of me on stuff we're, that doesn't work sometimes. Let's talk about ca bomb. the cables in the building. All right, um, let's. Uh, I would never make fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's roll it one more time because I think this is a, is a great spot. And I think that it's uh, part of it. So let's roll it without volume, if we can, unless you think you're going to get volume. All right, so this is young kid saying, yeah, yeah, did you see that? And then his dad jumps up and says, yeah, high five, because they're watching it together on the Skype. This is grandparents saying, what kind of dance is that? And then this is date night. And he's saying, hey, hey, dude, dude, it's date night. Come on, shh. And then they all get misty. And... Uh, back up and it's uh, Skype on TV uh, brought to you via Xfinity. Okay. It's much better with the audio, trust me. I think that was more exciting. Oh, yeah. That was fun. No, I'm, this is me at my worst, but it's... That uh, was good. You can call the show next time. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I, need, I know we want to also speak about their Xbox project. You launched on Xbox. Yes. Yeah, no, so... You have a, an interesting relationship with Microsoft. A lot well, of touch points with Microsoft. What's going well, on? Well, yeah, no, that, and that is interesting. Both of these had happened, uh, I think we started both of these. I know we started Skype well before there was any announcement with, uh, with Microsoft. And I think on the Xbox, we, uh, we started as well. And, um, I mean, as everybody knows here, I mean, the Xbox is a, a very relevant platform in the home. 
And as we've seen with some of the recent announcements, uh, Microsoft is committing a lot to that technology, you know, and so they're committing to it for gaming, they want it for entertainment. Uh, they are testing the limits on how people want to navigate uh, and interact with the, uh, with the television. Um, the thing that they want is they want content and they want uh, partners and we want the same. So uh, we started working with them. We created an app that's uh, built in their, uh, in their framework. It uh, goes against all the same X1 platforms back end. So if you do a search on there, you're going to the same search engine. We will be able to have persistence across the two platforms uh, and the others. And we've had uh, tremendous uh, success. The first night uh, we had way more downloads than I uh, thought we would. Um, now, How many? Well, we had, you know, I want to say that we had six, seven hundred thousand, but two, three, four, five hundred thousand were not our customers. Okay, they were excited about it, downloaded it, only to realize they had to be our customer to, uh, to use it. Um, we've had about 250,000 uh, successfully activate that are our customers and use it. And we have regularly uh, at least 125,000 uh, using it on a weekly basis. Well, I'm kind of curious about that. And now we're what, we turn on our connected TVs and we see, ah, there's HBO Go or something like that. Right. You can't get HBO until you're a subscriber. So I'm curious, how many new subscribers are you getting, do you know, based on the fact that uh, cable uh, apps are appearing on connected devices and requi requesting, requiring them to uh, become subscribers before they do it? I mean, that's, that's a whole new audience. Yeah, well, I don't know, uh, you know, First and foremost is what we want to do is we want to, you know, there's so many devices out there that are hungry for our content. Mm -hmm. And some of these devices are very powerful devices with powerful interfaces, powerful UIs. And uh, within the realm of uh, what we can do, we want to get our content on, on these non-traditional devices. Xbox is one of them. Tablets is another. Uh, we're doing a lot with Android on the tablets and, uh, and just recently launched all the same uh, products that we have on consumption on uh, iOS on the on the Android, and uh, and we continue with our relationship with Samsung to develop apps that go on there to put our put our content. So on the there. cable as an app is going yep. to happen. That's an actual. I think so. Yeah. No. I mean, I think we are doing it now. The the piece that's uh, that's interesting and in what everybody's trying to do is to make sure that you get into an area that's sustainable. So that's one of the reasons why we are big on HTML5 and some of the others because. Um, you know, for an Android tablet, you're going to write to, to uh, the Android uh, version of OS that you've got in that uh, device. For iOS, you're going to write to, to iOS because that's the way you're doing it today. As you go out and all of a sudden you say, now there's a long tail of a whole bunch of other products, you, we just don't have the resources, neither do they, if you have to have entirely different authoring environments. So we like HTML5. We've got great ambitions for it. And actually, the, uh, the, what we're doing on the Samsung uh, Smart TV is heavily HTML. Again, going back to our same back end, but for the, for the presentation. I know you and I talked yesterday, and I, I do want to show the Xbox, uh, but we talked yesterday briefly about the fact that all of these products were built in-house, but you're working with a whole bunch of other partners, and, yep. and you can't really be too public about <coughs> that. But uh, this community wants to know, because I know it's not most, mostly a question of if, it's more when you might open APIs. And Whoops when we might see Comcast opening the doors uh, for, uh, uh, for more third-party developers, uh, open APIs, things like that. Is that a, a year from now, six months, two years from now? Is that a possibility, well, a real? Well, that's a, that's a great question. And I think, first of all, um, we are more interested in partnering than we've ever been. Um, and I think, and we're finally getting to the point where we've got platforms where we can partner. So, I mean, obviously we're partnering with Skype, we're partnering with uh, our, you know, everybody else that's on the devices, we're partnering with Samsung, we're partnering with Microsoft, and, um, and we very much are interested in partnering with young startups uh, that are out here in, in Silicon Valley and other places. Um, we've launched in Augusta, we are launching in Boston, we are confident that we're going to do five more major markets this year. At the end of this year, we start to have, I think, enough scale. We, I think we start to get to the point where we've got our APIs uh, stable enough. And when I say stable enough, we've got uh, a ton of APIs that we've uh, created inside the company just so we can develop, okay, and so that we don't, mm -hmm. uh, it can go. But as you go through the first 12 months, you learn that um, this new app wanted to hit this API 10,000 times per second. You'd only engineered it to be hit 1,000 times. 
So all of a sudden, as it starts banging at 10,000 times per second, something else doesn't work, okay? And so we're baking those pieces out, but I think towards the end of this year, uh, and even before then, we're very willing to start talking to people to understand how we might work together. If people got creative ideas, we are all in. Uh, can wanting they, to can they send you an email? They can send me an email, yes. All right. Well, all right, let's quickly look at Xbox, and then we're going to look at Project Dayview. Perfect. Okay, so number three, please. Three video. So this is just showing, again, just Xbox interface, the various functionality they have with ratings, entity pages that you can go to, um, search, you know, sort by different places. Here's, you know, jump into a search menu. Again, graphically rich. Going to, uh, <clears throat> you know, our same database to grab the cover art that we're using for the X1 platform and, and the other pieces and uh, pulling it just into, uh, into that interface. And let's talk about uh, Project Dayview. I believe that was number four. I keep my number four, thanks. <laughs> I have it written down on a piece of grip tape. So, number uh, four, please. Let's show this and then I'll explain what it is. So this is showing basically a screensaver that would come up on your TV or you could pop up as a home page. You could go in to uh, see various things for your day, what you've got on your calendar. You can see your home security, which we've now rolled out pretty much across the country. You can see that it's armed to away. You can see if somebody you know, opens the back door. Um, <clears throat> you can look at your text messages, any piece that comes up, again, in a, uh, in a screensaver uh, in a screensaver mode as you go. Here somebody can send you an email with an attached image of uh, a Yankees game or a Giants game. Uh, and you said this will be on your home page or your, your first screen when you open Well, so here's, here's our next one. Yeah, I'm gonna talk through the few places that we're going to emerge it here. So here you can get like a smart reminder that you left a uh, light on in the basement. You've got your temperature. You've got a little bit of what's going on tomorrow. Um, here is, uh, you know, obviously it was Philadelphia focused. You can see a bunch of other pieces and totally programmable by you for information that we have and that we provide you through the service we have or other open feeds that you want to bring in. Some of the things in there that we're trying to, that we'll put in there are some of the smart features. So if we know over time that uh, you happen to be a Phillies fan and all of a sudden tonight it sees from your calendar that you've got, uh, dinner with your wife at uh, 7.30 and there's a Phillies game, it'll pop up a little reminder and saying, would you, uh, you know, I see you've got dinner tonight, would you like to set the recording for the Phillies game so you can uh, watch it when you come home or something like that. Those are the pieces we're trying to bring. So on the X1 platform that we're rolling out, this will be a feature, it'll come up as a, probably a screensaver, not necessarily your home page unless you set it to that. So it'll be at a certain period of time, you'll say as a screensaver. <coughs> we have ambitions of doing a bunch more with it and having it actually uh, actually even uh, in the morning set it as an alarm clock and have it turn on your TV and wake you up to what you've got for the day, pull in your traffic app and some of the other pieces. Lots of little things to work around to do that, but, uh, but we think it's just one more place where we kind of pull it all together. And again, this product concept is uh, really born out of Charlie Heron who's uh, the product, uh, product guy at Comcast who's thinking up 95% uh, of all I want to give Charlie ideas. applause for getting He's this great. product out the door so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Everything we've been asking for, at, you know, we're seeing. It's, it's coming. It's coming. And we, we recognize we've got a long ways to go, a lot of work ahead of us, and that there's lots of smart companies, big ones and small ones, you know, moving very, very rapidly. And, uh, and that, but we're trying to start with the consumer, we're trying to see where the trends are going, we're trying to build a platform that we can uh, continue to be relevant in TV of tomorrow. Well, I have one quick question, don't answer it for too long, maybe I just want to yeah. point it out, and then I want to uh, have uh, mentioned something else, which is Comcast has a significant Wi-Fi deployment, that's a very important <coughs> thing for you, and now, um, with the second screen, with the, uh, the check-in industry, with you know, will 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 Comcast become an out-of-home experience? Is this something where you're going to port all of these experiences in a mobile environment? Well, we, um, you know, consumers, uh, as you know, want portability, and today there's as many smartphones capable of watching video in the U.S. as there is video households. 
So, you know, 115 uh, million uh, video smartphones today, people want to be able to consume video out of the home. So we've been busy negotiating rights to where if you are a Comcast customer and you go out of the home, that you can uh, take your video with you and you can see it um, on it. And I think, uh, you know, we've got close to uh, 200,000 on-demand assets that can be viewed in and out of the home uh, on it. We've got uh, 10,000 assets on the tablet alone that you can view if you're a customer in and out of the home mm -hmm. uh, on it. So no intention of going over the top as a competitor but we very much want to enable our customers to enjoy the video where they want to enjoy it. And we're doing everything we can both on the right side as well as the technology side to enable that. You think we'll see a Comcast uh, app store we can download? And well, that, that's a good question. That's a good question and it really depends on, already today we've got a half dozen apps, give or take, that, uh, that are out there that you can download that do various things for you and how we manipulate them. Uh, for the TV, you know, that's a possibility. Who knows where that goes? Who knows what people really want for apps on the TV and some of the others. We're trying to put in the platform so if the business and the trends take us in that direction that we've got the ability to do it uh, and, uh, and or that we can team and partner with other people who have app stores. I'm sure this community can do that. All right, let's talk about the next topic which is obviously one of my favorites which is uh, enabling this industry to provide transactions on TV. Well, e-commerce. That's, that's where, where, where are you going with that? Well, we, um, you know, more and more, uh, both between the second screen usage in the, uh, in the front room and the fact that people are reminded that video stimulates you to an emotional point of wanting to buy and spend money, um, the, the living room or the front room is a, uh, is a place where people want to do commerce, and you're starting to see more and more of it. And oftentimes, something will stimulate you. You'll go to a search. You'll find it. And if it's stimulating enough, you'll actually do a transaction. Taking as much friction out of that process for consumers um, we think is very important and Arthur and other of us have worked on this for a long time uh, to do that and I think we are starting to get a lot of tools in place. So with that, uh, an announcement that I think actually went out a little bit earlier today. It was uh, supposed to be announced at this show. I know. We're, ha we're happy to announce or you're happy yeah, to announce. announced that uh, we've entered into a, uh, an agreement with PayPal to uh, put together a bunch of our people to look at new ways and innovative ways of bringing uh, commerce to both the television and to hybrid commerce to other devices that are uh, on simultaneously while you're, uh, while you're watching TV. So we're excited, you're excited about PayPal being a part of this uh, uh, community. I'm excited by uh, uh, starting to talk to them and bring them in as a partner because in the uh, commerce side, certainly on the settlement side, you know, PayPal is a very trusted, uh, you know, I think they stand for two or three things when you look at it. If you're buying something online, you always feel a sense of trust with PayPal, and you normally feel a sense of simplicity. And I think both of those are absolutely key as you come into the living room. It needs to be simple, it needs to be trusted, and so bringing them in as a partner as we look at this, I think is very, very powerful. I mean, there have been many t-commerce developers, there are, there are here, many, yeah. uh, but, this is, I, again, a transformative moment, yeah, and I I'm very excited block. about that, not just because they're our sponsor. I think it's a, yeah. an important development, and I'm happy for you that you enabled it so quickly. No, I, we, are, we are happy, too, and I have to, my uh, hat's off to both PayPal and to Arthur Arduna, who uh, called me up and said, you know, really want you to meet these guys. Let's start talking. There's got to be the start of something here. So this here is an exploratory piece as we work together to figure out what we can do together. Uh, but I think it's uh, I think it's going to yield some good things. Well, let's bring Scott. Uh, where is he? Scott Dunlap, right. he's VP Emerging uh, uh, Technologies from uh, from PayPal. Yeah. Great to see you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I'm excited. You can, excited. To, uh, you can <laughs> you sit over here. Okay. And I'll sit over there. Okay, we changed it. So, so last night I learned that uh, Scott's not only an avid runner, but he's also an avid motorcyclist. So we had a lot to talk about. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, it's good fun. Well, uh, Scott, the, as we said, this is a okay. There's a it's a very important development, and uh, how did this happen? Uh, I know we only have you a little bit uh, for a little longer. Can you tell me just uh, momentarily how did sure. you two start talking? How did that begin? Well, we. Um, by the way, thanks for having us. Um, I know this has been a very tight community, and it's been great. I've met so many people already this morning, and that has a lot to do with with how this relationship started. You know, PayPal, we're about e-commerce, so we're coming at this very much from the transaction perspective in, and we've been talking to consumers about television and e-commerce for a long time, but 
in the last two years in particular, a lot has changed. We had the, the tablet, the mobile, the Wi-Fi in the house, and we felt this gravitational pull into the living room. Uh, you know, right now we do about 20% uh, of all e-commerce transactions and about 33% of all mobile commerce transactions globally. And, but we're still, still seeing so much of this, the discovery happen uh, in the living room. So well, I want to go over the, the statistics that I, that from a report that was recently, um, that you guys did, yeah. to determine whether people were interested in e-commerce. But I, I need to let Tony go, so I want to uh, just ask, just quickly, how did you first start talking? How, did, how was well, that initiated? Well, uh, Arthur had a lot to do yes. with putting the two of us together, I think. So uh, we can either blame Arthur if it Where doesn't is Arthur? Work <laughs> oh, there he Arthur? is. Yeah. Everyone give Arthur a hand for doing this. Yes, I know. We're very excited. To, um, I Probably a little premature, but I did want to mention that uh, Arthur is formally joining uh, with That's PayPal fantastic. to help us do this because he's just been a great He's a great guy. He's a great helper. Yeah. All right. I'm okay, you're going to go? Okay, we'll, we'll keep talking. All right. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank Thanks you for coming. having me. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. You Thanks, everybody. All right, take care. I keep moving. My stage manager, Ernie, has always wanted me to do a Johnny Carson-style show. <laughs> he finally got it a little bit. Okay, so let's just talk about, I think there's my microphone. Keep switching. Let's talk a little bit about the statistics. Uh, last night, you and I were uh, discussing about the fact that you did a report of some kind. You do surveys. You, 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 you question your customers about whether or not they were interested in e-commerce. Yeah. And you said, well, at first, they, you, you're, the response was in the teens, but then fairly recently, it jumped up to 40%. Right? Yeah, actually, it was. So the question we that usually. they would buy something on the TV. Yep. So we're very, <laughs> believe it, we're all about buying. So we just cut right to the chase in these questionnaires. <laughs> would you buy from your television set? Uh, and we do the survey uh, every year. And a couple years ago, the, the answer was in the teens, you know, probably low teens. Uh, but starting uh, in 2011, it jumped right to 49%. So 49% of the audience willing to do it, and uh, and many of them familiar with PayPal. So we knew that the opportunity was was open for. You us didn't use this. the the word e-commerce though. You said, would you buy something on your TV? Would you buy right? something on your TV? Okay. Yes. Good and simple. So, do you think? Uh, w did you ask them whether or not they would buy uh, something uh, over eBay and? Would they would they believe that it would be fulfilled? Because, for example, you know, people watch the shopping channels a lot. It's very popular. Do you think that people will feel comfortable with PayPal to buy things and have it delivered? I mean, that's the key thing. Will it be fulfilled? Yep. <laughs> Your relationship with eBay. Can you explain the 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 TV, the PayPal, the eBay, the fulfillment? Sure. Is that going to happen? Yeah. Well, it's it's well. First, let me ask. How many people here have a PayPal account? Can I ask? See, I'll just give you an idea. There's quite a Somebody few. photographed that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and our roots, I think, started well. How many people got a PayPal account because they bought or sold something on eBay? See, so you can see our roots right there. Uh, but that I think was, I was one of your first customers. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was about eight, 10 years ago. So you know, now, actually, we do a majority of our transactions just on I used to work with Reed Hoffman sites. in the early days, so oh, yeah. I knew when it was first out. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, if you need a sponsor, you should give him a call, because he, <laughs> he's, he's got a little bit of money else. lately. I know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, we, um, we started with eBay, and we've done a good job transitioning over to actually just being a common uh, button, you know, nice, simple way to purchase on a lot of commerce sites. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, nice, easy couple of clicks, uh, we found a number of ways to do fulfillment that's very easy, either working directly with the brand, working with a, a merchant site, calling in any partners that we might need to do. So it's helpful as we explore e-commerce opportunities, if, if say a brand like a Nike wants to sell something and they don't want to fulfill it off of Nike.com, we have a number of merchants that we can bring to the case to make sure that happens. And I know with, uh, uh, with Comcast, or you also announced today that you're also working with Time Warner? Uh, that's correct. Well, although and I'm, TiVo. Yes, and TiVo. Uh, TiVo Triple one where I'm personally excited about because it's, I have a, a TiVo at home, a DVR, and I've always been curious about how you're going to do an interactive ad if I continue to skip them all. Um, but it turns Don't out, say that here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, is that sacrilege? Am I already? <laughs> I'm 20 minutes in. I've already. They, some of them can enable it. Punching some of them the sacred are cow. Preventing it. So it's in fixture. <laughs> no, but it's uh, with TiVo. They've come up with a, a very creative interactive ad unit that I think is going to help us all flush out what the user experiences could be. Where when you pause um, or at the end of a unit, you'll actually see an interactive ad unit that's there. And we're working with them where you can actually see product and purchase it uh, or get more information directly. So, But uh, eBay is saying, we'll deliver. 
Correct? Yeah. They're on board? Yeah, well, if okay. that's the case, yeah. And I know you recently announced a whole uh, uh, series of uh, new uh, retail partners are, and, and Home Depot and, and actually, I think I forgot to write the list down, but yeah. uh, are, are they aware that they're going to potentially be able to have direct ROI right there with one of their ads? Are they starting to think of developing an ad and working with, with you? Is yes, this something that's yes. going so to happen? This is, a, well, we're hoping so. This is a fun use case that we have. So for those of you who, uh, who follow PayPal, you'll know we announced um, about 15 retail partners so that you can use PayPal in the store at the point of sale. So I always use Home Depot as an example because I'm currently rebuilding my backyard. So I go there every weekend, <laughs> pay with PayPal. Um, one of the use cases that we're working on uh, with Comcast and with Chivo um, is the ability to see a commercial for something like Home Depot and have a coupon or a $20 off you know, pop up. And with one click, you can drop it into your PayPal wallet. And it's just automatically redeemed when you use PayPal at the point of sale. And we believe that connection from that moment of discovery to a very seamless use of a, a coupon or, or uh, something that we're calling a, a merchant-specific balance, basically money that's only good at that retailer or mm -hmm. a set of retailers, will really start to connect the two worlds. So we're really excited about so, it. So uh, you have this relationship with Comcast. They've got this cloud-based platform. They can enable all kinds of devices that can deliver coupons. They can take the coupon to Home Depot. Are we, we going to see the ability to pay with a, a barcode or a QR code or a, some kind of picture? Is this, is this something that's happening uh, between the two, or is, th is this on your plate? Well, we're exploring a number of different things. Um, I, as long as it takes steps out of the process, PayPal is generally pretty pleased with it. So um, before we put barcodes and start slapping everything everywhere, we try to say, can you just press select from the button? Okay. And then it's, can it automatically be redeemed just when you pay it? Like, that's the simplest case. And then from there, we sort of work our way out. But uh, we've noticed uh, different areas of the country, um, there's different use cases. So. I'm going to try a number of them. And, and I know that uh, there's an app, though, that's sort of ready to launch. I, it's going to be a donation app um, yeah. and for political representatives of our country, yeah, this presidents gonna, and things like that. It's Can an interesting use case for this year. So not only did the, the user expectations line up well, but it happens to be a presidential campaign year. So when we talk about ways that an ad can be interactive, um, donations is one of them that, we, uh, that we're very curious about. So PayPal does a lot with uh, nonprofits, but uh, presidential campaign donation, uh, for example, is something that we think will be pretty popular this year. So we're going to I didn't get to ask Tony. It. When will that launch, and who developed that? Well, it's again, it's a, our relationship with Comcast is a, a collaborative effort. So we're we're looking to uh, put a number of these experiments in place uh, before the uh, certainly with the uh, the campaign season uh, this fall. Okay. <clears throat> and okay, so you have relationship with MSOs, a relationship with uh, a connected device like TiVo. What about the other connected platforms, Samsung, LG, Panasonic, Zizzert? Sure. It goes on and on. Oh, no, we're excited to work with a number of them because uh, PayPal has a commerce engine. You know, we know if you put the button there, people pretty much understand it's going to be a simple experience. And we built the platform in a way we can integrate in a number of ways. But we started with uh, Comcast and TiVo um, in particular because uh, we realized that they were the forward thinkers and they were the innovators that we wanted to work with. And mm -hmm. so that's where we're going to start. But you can certainly expect a, a number of other relationships to develop over time. I know you've, doing, you've done a lot of research into this and uh, an analysis. Uh, what do your MBAs tell you about the, the growth opportunities of this market for PayPal? Where, what kind of numbers are you seeing for, uh, you know, how much revenue you can generate for your businesses or for yourselves in a e-commerce environment? Do you have those statistics at the top of your head? Well, it is. It depends on the MBA. So <laughs> <laughs> I found if you ask a Stanford MBA, uh, they'll tell you it's got to be at least $100 billion, you know, but then they don't tell you how many years out it is. Uh, and if you ask the Harvard MBAs, they'll tell you, well, it's probably only going to be you know, uh, a billion in the first couple of years. But I they stay can't, out of that kind of business. They can't predict the tablets and the other things that come and change the environment. Uh, the truth is, it's um, when you see the user uh, research jump from you know 15% to a 49%, it's really hard to predict um, what uh, what the potential is going to be. But it's definitely in the billions. Um, a lot of times when we do the math, we say that t-commerce can be as large as e-commerce is today. Uh, it's 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 not a hard stretch to get there. We just have to put the right experiences in front of the users. I I worked. I have a little personal story. I worked for a publication. I worked for a magazine here in town. I guess I won't name it. 
But, uh, and my beat was commerce, it was e-commerce when it first started. And I remember at a certain point they said, we're dropping that, it's not going to go anywhere. My editor in chief said, it's not going anywhere. And I said, are you crazy? This is gonna be the biggest thing you ever saw. This is in the, I'm dating myself, but this is the mid 90s. Excuse me, pat on the back. Okay. Yeah, exactly, that's <laughs> right. I don't understand why you didn't see that, but uh, uh, it's good to see that, um, that you've done a lot with it. But now you're moving out of, potentially you're moving out of the realm of providing software experiences and transaction gateways. And by the way, we, everybody bought tickets over PayPal gateway. Nice. Just because I, I used the Eventbrite service. But is PayPal going to get into the business of developing applications to support TV? Are you going to get into, uh, independently of your, of your partners, are you going to start develop television yourself that wraps around financial topics? I mean, is that a new direction for PayPal, or you haven't thought about that yet? How do you? I, I will say we know what we do best, and that is just to make sure that the payment happens nice and simple. So I, our ambition right now is, mm -hmm. uh, if we can just make that happen for a number of application providers, um, we'll let all of us end up iterating on the consumer experience. We can find the ones that fit. Uh, and I think for the immediate term, those are probably the things we're going to work on the most. Uh, okay. And how, how will PayPal, mon how does PayPal monetize a t-commerce ad? I mean, one of the problems in this industry, but not, not problems in the industry, but t-commerce has always been very complex, but not just to enable it, but because it, there's always a piece of the pie that has to be separated. And a lot of people put an enormous amount of time and energy to build platforms that, that to, you know, try to analyze that, track it, manage it, deliver it. What about a transaction platform that manages uh, how that pie gets split up? So it's more of a proactive uh, positioning for PayPal, not just to provide the transaction gateway, but to provide the entire back-end financial environment, a service for, uh, for various broadcasters and the, the operators to use. That's not content, but that's still in the, in, uh, I think, potentially within your purview and that will support this industry. They are going to need all of that. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, um, I've never had a longer whiteboard discussion than my team trying to explain to me the ecosystem of the world of television. <laughs> and it's just, they had to go from one whiteboard to the next one. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And I looked at it and just said, you know, we're, maybe we should just stick with the payment part. We'll just do the payment processing and then, and, and enrich everyone to have much, much better experiences and we'll let them split up all of the pieces. Um, but, uh, so I think we're gonna try to keep it as simple as we can uh, to get going, just enable as many things and then not, not worry too much about it because I will say it's pretty crazy. It's a, now that I understand what it takes to get things done in this industry and how much collaboration is required, I'm gonna stand up and applaud for every announcement today because uh, it's just, it's simply amazing that you guys can continue to progress and embrace all of this technology when I can't even get through one of your contracts to understand what's going on. So <laughs> it's fascinating. Well, I think I think my sponsorship contract from you guys was 14 pages long. I can't get through. No, okay. Uh, as long it's as you okay. paid with PayPal at the end, that's all that matters. That's all. I, we just sign. Uh, now, what about Silicon Valley? You're a, a complete creature of Silicon Valley. Yeah. You're an entrepreneur. So. Is, uh, and how, so how important is t-commerce to PayPal? Where on the levels of priority, uh, on, the, on the priority list? Where does enabling t-commerce stand? And then where does it also stand in terms of looking for your developer community, communicating this to in your PayPal huge events? And I mean, where will all of these new possibilities fit in your world? Sure. And, and at, the, at, at, at that top level. Uh, so we've always looked at it as sort of the, the third leg of the stool because we've had the, the from your PC world, which is now quickly becoming PC and mobile. Um, we're working on point of sale to make sure that you can do it there. But the living room was always this, this tough one to crack. Mm -hmm. um, and so now that this come along, we, we believe that that's a, it's a really big part of what we do. Now, as a Silicon Valley company, we're looking for someone who's, uh, for partners who are willing to iterate, you know, collaborate, and understand we're gonna try a bunch of things and see what ends up working. Let mm -hmm. the users tell us what they like and what they don't like. Um, so are you gonna open up a developer community for t-commerce? Well, I will tell you that all of the capabilities that we have are gonna be things that will be open for others to use. Uh, so. I know um, one of your goals at our show was to, uh, to say to everyone to contact you, to reach out. Yeah, and absolutely. I think there's a magnet or something 
Uh, I, I, I tried to make sure that there was an email address for you to use to, call, to contact them. And that's, from what I understand, is that's your goal, is to, is to please to contact them. In fact, on your LinkedIn, LinkedIn, thanks, Reed. Yeah. LinkedIn um, bio, it said in the bottom, if you know what, you, what job you want at PayPal, I'm happy to hear what it is. Not that people are looking for that, but, you're, yeah. but PayPal and you are very open-minded to suggestions and collaborations and, and, uh, and for people to contact you. I yes, think that's absolutely. It's, and there's, my goal there is twofold. One is love to hear the ideas, and it's even at PayPal, within eBay in particular, there's amazing how many folks internally we can help you get in touch with to advance what it is that you're doing. And uh, the other part of that is we've learned there's only so much that we can figure out. Now what we have figured out is the payment business. And now that I've gone deep into it over the last year, believe me, it's not one that you want to get too deep into. It's really complicated and crazy. And it's good to have a partner like us that just takes care of all of that mess and makes it nice and simple. And uh, I, but back to the previous question, do you know where it sits on the priority list? Well, it, one to five, one to 30? It's, it's a big one. Um, so we, uh, my team is called Emerging Opportunities and New Ventures, I think, my name tag. I'm going to have to cut that title down. It's not even fitting on the name tag anymore. Uh, and essentially, our job is to look at things that, that, uh, that are going to boom in the next one to three years. And uh, the T-Commerce one is quickly went from a back burner project to one of our biggest ones uh, that Why we're looking do you think at for it next went, year. Was it an iPad situation? Is it Steve Jobs that's turned the tide? Why do you think that is? Why did that, ha why did that turn so quickly? It seems to be um, a, um, an intersection of three things. So one of them is the broadband in the home has definitely changed things. Um, the second one is the proliferation of devices, particular mobile and the tablet, has come along. And what it's really done is changed the expectations of every connected device within the house. And uh, that's probably been the biggest driver. So everybody went to, they went from, I'm not sure how to buy on TV to, I don't understand why my TV won't let me buy something. Like it just overnight just happened about that fast. So. It all starts with the user experience. If the expectation is set and we can help deliver, then it's going to be a huge opportunity. So we've put the assets behind it. We've started the partnerships. Um, and uh, we're getting very excited about ladder 2012 and 2013. And I know that you, you we were talking earlier about um, the various retail partners. You're starting to put PayPal on, on the front of all those screens. When you buy something, you can pay right there from that screen. So. Is that something you're going to do with the with uh, television, uh, where you can uh, touch and it'll be, uh, it'll be like? Have you worked on any sort of big screen implementations? I mean, maybe that's a Comcast issue. Yeah. Where, have, have they explored that with you, where somebody could go up to a screen and touch it? There's that as well. It's definitely on the roster of things. We have within our labs a number of actually both touch screen and voice enabled capabilities, and and uh, they tend to both do really well, particularly outside of North America. But uh, everything's on the table. I think that's why we like working with, uh, with Comcast and TiVo in particular, is uh, we just sort of open up the labs and see what's there. And so give us a hint as to who you'll announce in the next uh, six months to a year. You know what? You're baiting me. <laughs> I'm actually working at a public company now, and that's what they call a forward-looking statement. And uh, <laughs> I have already been smacked a couple of times in the last month for making those things, so I've got to be careful. How about market segment? How about, yes, you will have more announcements in the t-commerce space. How about that? <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. I think that wraps it up for me, and Great. I really appreciate it. No, it's Thanks good so to much, be Scott. here. Thanks so much, Jason. Okay.